Hi guys, it's Abby and welcome back to my channel. Whew. So for today we have a very, very, very requested video. Probably my most requested video of all time, I think. And that is talking about my face tuning and how I edit and face tune my Instagram photos for my makeup account. You can go ahead and follow at Abby Roberts Artistry if you're not already. So newsflash, if you're not already aware, pretty much everything you see on Instagram is face tuned. That is just a fact nowadays. Pretty much any celebrity or or influencer that you see be it just to change the lighting and effects and things or even more reshaping and completely altering the image so my stance on facetune I don't see a problem with it as long as you're open and honest about it and that is something that I am very vocal about I'm not ashamed of the fact that I facetune my images I am confident in my talent like I show you guys on the video you all see what it looks like I'm not trying to hide anything and I do live streams and all that sort of stuff so the editing is really just to get my photos up to that professional standard and I'm I'm sure you guys want to know how to do that too so if you'd be interested in seeing what my sort of process is then please do keep on watching so let's go ahead and get right on into it why don't we first off I use the app facetune not facetune 2 because I have no idea how to use that one I find it very confusing I've always used facetune 1 so I just stick to using that. I've already gone ahead and taken a bunch of photos of this look I created earlier and I'm just gonna select and open it you will see this sign saying it's a very large image because another important thing is that you take it on a professional camera or just some sort of high quality camera. The back camera on most iPhones is great quality and I've seen many influencers who just take their photos on that. And another really important thing is having good lighting. I would recommend even just getting a ring light from Amazon. You can get them for around £50 which is pretty cheap compared to what ring lights used to be back in the day when I was first starting off doing makeup. That's very important because when you're editing your photos you can get away with a lot more editing if your photo is of a higher quality because it will help to disguise that. I'm just going to go ahead and zoom on into that look and show you it unedited. There's a few things I want to change and a few things that we have to do with lighting, all that jazz. This look is inspired by Drag Race and Tess effects on Instagram. So my biggest tip by far is editing the lighting. As you can see my photos come out quite dark like this one right here. So I like to edit the lighting to make the photos pop and stand out on an Instagram feed. This wall is actually this wall right here. It's supposed to be white like this I don't edit the exposure or anything like that which people usually do as that can wash out the image I just go into filters lighting lighter. Can you see that difference? And I go ahead and apply that and then I keep layering it up and Clicking apply until I'm happy with the brightness. Now I think it's starting to get a little overexposed on the face right here. So I bring it right up to the maximum and then go to the wipe tool which allows you to remove some of the filter. And I'm just running that all over the face and body. So it's still whitening in the background but not overexposing the face and body which is exactly what we want. So we want a nice white background but still keep the quality of the makeup. I think I'm just going to go over one more time on the background to make it as white as I want. Go back into the wipe tool and remove it from the person. The person is literally me. <laughs> so you can see when I click before and after, look at the massive difference that that makes. Literally the filters tab changed my entire photo game. Like before I used to just upload the photos like this straight to Instagram and they were getting not even half of the likes, like nowhere near it, trust me. Next up is the smooth tool. I love a good smooth smooth but something that I hate is when you see photos that are smoothed all over the face. I think it looks completely fake and you're just giving away the fact that you edited the photo. I want it to look as natural as possible even when it's not natural. <laughs> so I have a bit of texture on my forehead and just personal preference I like to go ahead and smooth over that. The next thing I do is, as I like to wear a lot of wigs, obviously this neon yellow green hair is not mine. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the smooth tool, just delicately over the hairline. Not too much because it can start to look really, really thick and blurry. But this lace on this wig is actually pretty good, so I don't need to do too much. And you can see there's a couple of stray hairs, so I'm going to go in with the smoother tool and just remove those with that. I have some more texture just around my chin and where I forgot to wax my moustache so I'm gonna go over that as well. I think that is it for the smoothing on the face. There is the before and after. Before, after, before, after. 
I just go over my chest as well because I don't wear makeup on my chest so you can see like my veins and things and I just prefer to smooth over that. There we go. So the next step is the details tool. This is one of my favourite steps to really make shimmers and glitters and things like that pop. So my highlighter, I like to go over those areas just to make it a little more intense. So a tip for the details tool, I always tap on the area rather than swiping and scrubbing because if you're swiping it, it's going to look really, really harsh and that's not what we're going for. So I'm just going over all of the areas that are highlighted. So down the bridge of the nose, the tip of the nose the inner corner, the cheekbone, a little bit above the brow, not too much there. And I like to go over my lip gloss too, just to make that pop in. Then I'm going into tones. Tones is another tool that you have to be very careful with. Never scrub with the tones because it can start to look a little bit like this. As you can see, it's like you can really see the edges of it and all that sort of stuff. So I'm going to erase that. We do not want that on our image, but I like to go and select the black tones down in our little palette here and I go along my lash line just to make sure that my lashes and my false lashes are nicely blended together. I'm gonna go ahead and do that on the other eye as well. And because of this specific look I've got a lot of eyeliner on the eyes and sometimes eyeliner can reflect in the lighting and look a little bit white and shiny so I'm gonna tap over the eyeliner areas with some black tones as well just to hide the little reflections there and here is the before and after I try not to go in too much with the tones tool especially when editing my makeup because I'm always aware of the fact that I don't want to be editing the makeup on and actually taking away from my skill and you know changing it to be something that's not actually there but I do sometimes fix tiny little mistakes like you can see here there is a fold in my eyelid and it's making the checker square go out of line so I'm just going to select a white tones and just go over that edge like it's not changing it too much to the point where it's unrealistic it's just fixing a tiny little mistake and then I go over that with the smoother tool which blends it so it's part of the skin so I'm going into tones again now and selected the white color in my palette if you have a darker skin tone you may want to use something that's a bit more like a, a off-white or a sort of goldy color or even a bronzy color if you have a very deep skin tone and I'm just gonna go ahead and go over my highlight on my nose as I'm turned away from the light a little bit the nose highlight can tend to dull down and get that grayish cast so I just like to dab over that area not scrubbing again dabbing we are always dabbing ew not dabbing <gasps> so that's the before and after of after I adjusted those little highlights now this image is pretty much done if you want to leave it here you totally could but I like to do this step sometimes just to bring a little bit of brightness to the eyes. So back into tones again I use the picker to select a colour from my eyeball. I go into the palette and bring it up a little bit higher than my natural eye colour. I'm also going to make it a little bit more turquoisey and go to the tones tool to apply it. I'm just going to dab on a little ring of light around my iris and this just helps to really bring some life to your eyes because wearing thick false lashes can totally cover up your eyes and the light doesn't really get to them so this step just brings a bit of brightness back into them now that is looking a little too fake I'm gonna go to the erase tool and just dab over each eye a couple of times until it's looking a nice amount of lightness I think that looks pretty good I'm liking that Lastly, I'm just going back into the details tool and running that along the waterline because I've got a nice bright green on the waterline and I feel like it's just not popping as much as I want it to. The details tool works by adding sharpness and contrast to your image, so it's really going to help to make those colours and details pop. Here is the final before and after using just Facetune on the image. Before and after. Before and after. I am very pleased with how this image came out, so I'm going to save that to my camera roll. Do, do, do. I'm going to go ahead and open the image in my camera roll, and I like to crop it in the camera roll just because I don't like the cropping feature on Instagram, and I also don't like the cropping feature in Facetune, I prefer this one. So if you go to the bottom right corner, you'll see a little aspect ratio thing, and I click on square because I keep my images on Instagram square. I'm going to crop it how I like it, trying to keep the makeup pretty central in the image. And I'm liking how that's looking, so I'm going to go ahead and press done, and that is the final image. So I would go ahead and take that to Instagram, open it up, 
If it's looking a bit too grey, I want it to be a bit more white. Sometimes I will use the highlights tool and just bring that up a bit. In this case, I feel like it's looking okay. So I would go ahead and upload that straight to Instagram. So there you have it. That is how I face tune all of my photos. I do pretty much the same thing to every single photo that I edit. Depending on the makeup, I might do some different little fixes along the way, but it's pretty much the same every time. I hope you all enjoyed, especially the tip with the lighting because, oh my gosh, that literally saved my life. I don't know how I discovered that, but I'm so glad that I did and I hope that I helped some of you guys out too. Especially if you're struggling with lighting, that can totally help to just brighten up your image if you can't afford expensive lighting just yet. If you have any questions about face tuning, photo editing, etc, please leave those in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. Please don't forget to go ahead and follow me on my social media. I am at Abby Roberts Artistry on Instagram and at Abby Art Artistry on Twitter and TikTok. Ew, TikTok! I can't believe I'm on TikTok. Ugh. And of course, if you like the video, if you learned something new here today, please do give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. Also, if you're new here and you enjoyed this, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get a notification every time I upload. This week's Artist of the Week goes to Lee Easthope from Easthope Effects on Instagram. You may have seen Lee on the BBC Glow Up TV show. It's a TV show competition for makeup artists, UK makeup artists, and it's been really fun. I've been watching it with my family because a few people that I'm friends with from Instagram are on it and I found Lee through that. He's super super talented so please go check him out. I especially love the inkpot look that he did dying to do something inspired by that so definitely go check him out and if you'd like to have the chance to be featured as next week's artist of the week make sure to always retweet my video links when they go up on twitter thank you guys so so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed this video and i hope to see you in the next one bye